Welcome to When It Comes to Insert, I'm Shopping Bulk. Hey, I'm Eric. And um, one thing that SQL Server loves is that if you do a lot of stuff, you know, within the same transaction, within the same statement, uh, so stuff can be optimized on, on, on the SQL side. And what SQL Server hates is if you give it one little task and wait for that to be completed, and then you give it another little task and wait for it to be completed. Um, and AL and Business Central actually supports that, uh, that perspective when it comes to insert. So we can actually insert data into the database in two different ways. We can do it one at a time, or we can do bulk inserts. Um, but it's not very clear when you look at the code when when what is happening. So in this video, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna show you how bulk insert works and and how you can do it and when it you should use it and when you should not use it. So let's get right into it and. Um, I actually, I actually cheated uh, because I did a bit of code before I started the video just to avoid you guys looking at me type and type and type. I'll end up typing anyway before the video is over, but uh, I got a head start. And uh, what I created uh, was a table, a very, very simple table here. There's three fields, a field designated primary key in the ancient year. And two data fields, text 1000, just so we have some, you know, a bit of data. And I also created a page here, a list page where we can uh, we can see those three fields. And actually, I just I created them with the with the AL file wizard. Um, anyway, and I also added an action called insert. And let's look at that for a second here because. That's why we're here. Uh, so we can see here that I start by deleting everything just so we have a clean slate uh, and uh, this is easy. Then I record the start time um, because then I can at the end tell how long did this process take. So when you when you have a date time that's internally count as, uh, as milliseconds uh, since, I don't know, when, sometimes way back. Uh, so we can do a simple saying that current date time minus the time when we started, that's the elapsed time for a process. And you can see here in the, in, in the loop we have is, and actually let's do 10,000 just to get a bit more data. So, so we will insert 10,000 records and we fill out, maybe we should do this a bit nicer. See, that was, that was kind of sloppy code. That, not that it really matters, but we'll do an init, assign a primary key, assign some data to the two data fields. Um, and then we're gonna insert it. So let's run this just so we have a uh, common reference for how long this will take. Okay, so I have my action up here. I call insert. And we got one second and 196 milliseconds to insert 10,000 records into our table. It's not bad, pretty good. Um, so let's try one thing here. So we will go back to the code. And then I'm going to put an if around this. So if we cannot insert for some reason, then no, we'll, we'll do an error saying big trouble. There we go. That, that might be how you want to do the code. That, 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 that does not look strange. You, you might even want to you know, there's, there's a pattern and lots of discussion whether there's a good or bad pattern. Uh, but if you cannot insert, then at least let's modify. Um, but we'll, we'll just stick with the error. So if we actually do something 
then we'll get the error. Since we are deleting all records up here to begin with, insert should never fail. Um, so let's run this again. And uh, let me make sure that I have. So one second and 196 milliseconds. So the only change we have done in code that we put an if around the insert. Oh, hang on. I know that guy. Let's do it on the right page on this guy. Okay. So three seconds and 152 milliseconds. So not quite a factor of three, but almost, right? So before one second and 192, and now three seconds and 152. That's a pretty steep uh, change. And, and well, you know what my point is here, is that as soon as we did this, we are forcing Business Central to insert every single record of the, those 10,000. Where if we are back to, to this guy and just a B dot insert, then the insert, and, and, and to be honest, let's actually, because maybe my whole video is wrong. So let's add a commit here to force the insert before we calculate the message. Uh, because what we might have recorded is actually the time it took to put it into the insert buffer and not actually insert into the database. So let's see what number we get now. No change. So as soon as we go to the direct insert, our time is now a third of if we did the individual inserts. So that is massive. Um, and I had a process in, 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 uh, inside the, the, the simple, simple downloader of, of the simple object designer where I'm downloading all the symbols for all objects and building data structures based on the JSON and stuff like that. So there's, you know, there's lots of fields in Business Central. There's lots of uh, report elements and stuff like that. Uh, and, you know, I had one of the inserts was encapsulated inside an if, and, and it was slow. And by removing that if around the insert and making sure that I deleted something before I ran the process, then it ran way faster. Okay, so let's actually. So now, now you see see the big difference here. So we have we have two two ways this can can go go about. Um, but let's take a look at what Microsoft thinks, the documentation for this. So there is a page about bulk inserts under SQL Server performance, and um, it doesn't matter if this is on Primer or in the cloud. This is the same thing. Um, so let's look at the constraints. So we actually already figured this one out, that if you're using the return value from insert, then we, you are no longer buffered. So there's no longer bulk inserts. If you are in bulk insert country, then the records are sent when you call commit, or you do a modify or delete on the same table, or you call any find asterisk, calc asterisk. So calc sums, calc fields, um, not calc date, but that's not on the record. Um, so as soon as you are touching the same, uh, the same record again, then it's committed. No, no, that's the wrong word, uh, because it's not really committed, but it's written to, it's no longer buffered. I think that's probably the way, better way of saying. 
But there are more constraints. Um, so this was actually also part of uh, you know optimizing the you know tables with heavy traffic. But if we have a auto increment primary key, then this doesn't work. If the blob fields in the table, it's not working. Um, and then they, they have an example here, which is, you know, they, they are looping through a journal and then they're finding the last year entry and entry number, uh, which isn't that, um, am I completely off the rails? Let's go look. Uh, I thought that was auto increment now. It's not. So yeah, so this will um, GL entries are relying on uh, on bulk to be fast, um, and so so the example they have is that don't go and uh, and uh, find the last inside a loop because then the insert will be written when when the final last is executed so instead of this do the final last outside of the loop and then just increment uh, increment over the loop uh here actually dot next dot next yeah um if you on prem you have an option to actually uh, in in the con custom settings the config on the server you have an option to to disable this i i guess only for debugging troubleshooting um but let's recap here that if you have a let's go back to the page you know if you have a unprotected insert that is way, f and, and you're doing lots of them, then it's way faster than if you do a, you know, a protected. And let's say you have a, a scenario where uh, you're going to insert 10,000, but you know that there might be some of the records might already be there. Uh, so processing time might be faster to start by deleting those if, depending on, of course if there's 10,000 and you need to uh, in, insert the same 10,000 again uh, then there is processing time but but you might have options for you know avoiding the if in 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 in, in the name of um, of performance and speed um uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's bulk insert. So I try whenever I can to uh, to make sure that I am bulk insert or I'm. No, no, that, that's wrong. I'm 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 trying always to make sure that the clo the code is clean enough so that if the system decides that well, hey, bulk insert will work in this case, it can bulk insert. Um, so, so don't, don't put ifs around your inserts if they don't serve a purpose. Um, think about, uh, like the blob field constraint. Think about, do you, do you want to add a blob field to a, a heavy traffic table or do you want to use the media instead? Maybe we should do a video on media, uh, at some point. Let me know in the comments below if, if, if I don't think I've done any videos on media and media sets fields. Um, anyway, so think about bulk inserts when you are inserting lots of data. And um, until uh, next time, I suggest, you know, go watch this video because that's a good one. And then I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.